We're here in the dressing room at Her Majesty's Theatre, just up. You've literally just come off from a performance. Yeah, ten minutes ago. Ten minutes ago. <laughs> How'd it go? Very well, thanks. <laughs> yes, yeah, good crowd. Good matinee, good crowd. And you've got yeah. a performance tonight. We do. Thank you for talking to Not us. Not at all, it's a pleasure. Um, now, you've been in the role of Raoul here at the, at the theatre for how long? Uh, since uh, September last year, so in nine months, yeah. uh, which has gone very quickly. Actually. How are you enjoying that? It's I like... absolutely love it. Yeah, it's great. Why? Um, it's an iconic show. Yeah. Uh, it's a show I remember seeing as a kid, as a teenager, and thinking, wow, that's a spectacle and that's, that's impressive. Yeah. I, I'd quite like to do that. And, it's uh, always nice to be in a hit. Absolutely. <laughs> I've, been mean, in some, I've been in some non-hits. <laughs> I've been in some much smaller shows. Hit, uh, non-hit, yeah. iconic show. No. Yeah, exactly. So the variety of that's fantastic. But then when you land something like this and mm -hmm. you're part of something that the whole world knows about, it's and a real world privilege. Loves. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a privilege. It's, it's a great job. I, love I, I, I read somewhere that you were involved in the film also. No, I wasn't. No, no, the, 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 this I is the DVD about, version. The, uh, oh, the 25th, the, uh, the yeah, anniversary yeah. one. Yes, How yes, yes, yes. Uh, that was brilliant. That what was in the just like a party, I guess. It was a party. There were so many people, and it was crazy. It was like the most manic two weeks. Uh, it just flew by. It was, a, it was, it was chaotic, but it all came together. One of those things that everyone just loves being yeah. a part of, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, you know, we only we only had a few scenes each to worry about, mm. obviously apart from the principals, but but to be part of something that iconic mm. and, and have all the original Royal cast Albert there. Royal Albert Hall, yeah. Oh, all your mates around you. It's exactly. fantastic. <laughs> okay, so when you're in a show like this, yes. it's not surprising that a young man who is wanting to perform and yes. wants to record. Exactly. When you actually get into the studio, you get the opportunity, what do you record? Um, so, I have always enjoyed songwriting as a, as a hobby um, and started as a, as a student a guitar, did the usual thing, you know, <laughs> guy, let's play the guitar, that'd be cool. Uh, and uh, talk it's, a good prop. Talk it's a good prop, it's a good thing to have in the corner of the bedroom. Yeah. And initially I maybe only used it like once a week. Uh, but I, 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 I taught myself, I, I bought books and DVDs and, and got the hang of it and eventually thought, oh, this would be quite fun to, to start writing. And through that I got a job with a kids theatre company. Uh, which I used to work in during the holidays at university. Mm -hmm. I used to write musicals for children, basically. And that's how I got into it. Uh, but obviously I never thought to record any of that stuff myself, so... No. But in my 20s... But it made for writing. Yeah, exactly. And practice, a reason to practice. Yeah. And it was a very safe place to practice as yeah. well, because no one was judging, you know, your lyrics or, or how, how serious your songwriting was. No one cared, because it was no. for kids. It was just mm. all about catchy tunes, good melodies, mm. and things that, that people enjoyed singing. And yet, kids are pretty... Cluey about letting you know if very they like this stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, they're yeah. very honest. So it was a really, really good way to start off, actually. And then as I got older, I sort of developed the confidence to explore my own style, mm -hmm. my own my own musical tastes, and and I started writing songs. And I sat on them for many years. I didn't do anything with them until I met or re-met a friend from university who I hadn't seen for a few years. And it turns out he'd set up a recording studio. Don't you love that? Yeah, it just happened, it <laughs> fell into place. And uh, Joe, his name is Joe, Joe Davison, and he and his wife, Nikki, uh, who we used to do Amdram together at uni, all of us, um, they said, why don't you bring the songs in and, and, and we'll just have a go? And, that, and that's how it started. And time's not on my side to stop you leaving. I'm reaching for something while the walls are closed. Incredibly creative process. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. It must feel great. It's it is. It's great, and it's great when you know the person on the other side of the yes. glass in the studio. You trust them, and, and you cr you end up creating things together because you go in and all you have are a piano part or a guitar part and a set of lyrics, and some ideas in your head of what the finished project might be. Mm. Uh, and it, and it's through the collaboration with everyone else that it ends up being something that's arranged for a band or, or for. Or strings or for rock, whatever whatever you decide for that song, it's very collaborative. So mm. that, that's really enjoyable. I like mm. that very much. Do you like being behind the microphone? I do. Mm. I do it's like a totally being different thing. Totally different and thing. And you can have people who are very good with live and not necessarily yeah. very good doing cabaret because it takes something of yourself. Yeah. And then again, recording is a totally different thing again. And something happens. It's like I've always thought it's like it's like people who photograph. There's mm -hmm. a photogenic quality that happens when someone takes a photograph. They either come up well or not, exactly. and it's the same with recording. Yeah, 
you That's actually exactly right. you actually work with so it's totally I think of them as two totally separate things. Yep. Uh, when you are, I suppose it's a bit like the equivalent of, of stage acting versus screen acting. You have yeah. you have this world where you you can be so much more detailed and and, and everything can be minute mm -hmm. because you're shut away and the microphone is here. So every choice you make comes across. <laughs> He sang to me in dreams he came that voice which calls to me and speaks my name. Did I just hear an alarm start ringing? Did I see sirens go flying past? Though well, I don't know what tomorrow's bringing, I got a singular impression things are moving too fast. Exactly. Now it's called sides, your it's old sides. Yeah. So half of it is the side of you, which is theatre. Yep. And the other half is the original. What sort of um, what sort of songs are you doing from the theatre world? So from the theatre world, uh, it's sort of um, a combination of songs that have got me here, mm -hmm. songs songs that have have meant a lot over the years um, through drama school or important auditions or a couple of my early jobs um, and then otherwise it's been songs that either speak to me in a specific way or, or I've always wanted to have a go at. I mean a, a good example of that is is Phantom um, doing a cover of the title song from this show. Mm -hmm. Now of course I've never played the Phantom yeah. but I've spent I was here in the a lot ensemble. Of time with it. Yeah, I was here in the ensemble six years ago. Uh, five years ago, I did uh, did a cover role, and um, you know, I spent three years of my career in this show. It mm. means a lot to me, mm. and I sing "All I Ask of You" every night, mm. so people know what that sounds like. I don't need to sing that, you know. And I had this idea for an original take on the title song, mm. which is um, uh, a very sort of intense flamenco percussion and guitar heavy thing because I think the song is quite tango-esque or, or, or passionate in that way. Mm. Uh, I saw the film Moulin Rouge obviously many years ago which a lot of people did, fantastic film and that film is excellent at taking songs we all know really well mm. and doing them in new ways, making mm. it theatrical and mm. but in a new way mm. and, and I tried to combine Laurie those ideas. Could you come to stage door please? That's there you go. We are backstage, backstage. there you go, backstage <laughs> balls. Um, yeah so, so, so that's an example uh, but then there are more simple versions. Um, I cover uh, one, two, three from the Fix, which okay. was the show I was doing as a student when I decided I wanted to do this for a living. really enjoyed on this album having other vocalists come in wow. and, and, and a lot of the songs, the original songs, have very specific scenes or stories behind them as ideas. Mm -hmm. So so maybe that's something I'll play. Makes every step worthwhile No need to remember Just move on Here I am And I'm standing It's a combination of things that have a place in my heart, but also things that I just want to have a go at. Mm. Um, and hopefully there's a good balance of those oh, two lovely. things. Well, good luck with the album. Thank you. Before we finish, uh, where will Nadine be in 10 years' time? Oh. After he's recorded his fourth album, <laughs> it's top of the charts. Uh, that's a really good question. What, th hopefully. are there any roles that you really, is theatre your thing? Theatre's my thing, okay. yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I'd be crazy to say that I wouldn't be interested in screen. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a realist, and I recognise that this career is very difficult. It's very hard. So, and I sometimes just like people get seen as theatre people yeah. or film people. Yeah. And sometimes they very easily. And some people just move between yeah. the two. But, but what I don't want to do is fight against who I am and what I do. Mm -hmm. And I, and the way I see it is that you know it's been nearly ten years since I studied theatre, and and I've got here. I've got to my first West End lead, mm -hmm. and I'm having the time of my life. And 
why not just let that roll? This is called stage door Johnny, just as a uh, matter of fact. Where would you have been when the first time you stood at stage door? But the, fir uh, 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 the biggest memory I have of that is the first time I went to see The Lion King, mm -hmm. I th which, I mean, I was a teenager. I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I wanted to meet the actor who played Pumbaa. Okay. Because I, he just, you know, as a like 13, 14 year old yeah. boy, that was pretty, that was right up my street, you mm -hmm. know? Big boys, fart mm. jokes, comedy. <laughs> uh, so I went. I went to meet. I went to meet him in stage door, and the actor was called Martin Wright, I believe. I bet he doesn't realise. I bet and Martin Wright doesn't realise that he's made an yeah, impact on you. Exactly. Mm. And uh, a few years later, no, I say a few years later. That's that's nonsense. Many years later, I went to see uh, a show at the National Theatre, and he was in it. Isn't and I was great? like, Oh my God, it's Pumba. <laughs> And that's what that's that's what I, my memory of stage door is like, <laughs> sort of the, the boundary between being still being a kid and a, and a fan who who thinks of people as their character. It's brilliant here. Every day you get someone go, Raúl, and I'm like, well, yeah, but I'm at, my name's Nadim, and they're just not interested. They don't want to know who I am. They just care that I'm Raúl. So I, I I think yeah, that would be my Raúl. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to Nadim backstage at the Majesty's Theatre. But this coming Sunday, he is celebrating the launch of his new CD with a performance, a launch at the Hippodrome Casino. So make sure you're there to celebrate this great artist and his wonderful new CD.